in Vienna uh, two months after the nuclear disaster in Fukushima, and she met with TEPCO officials, with this Dr. Barkley G. Jones, with IAEA officials, and with Mr. Um, um, let's see. Uh, Wataru Mizumachi, who I mentioned earlier as the um, sort of the liaison between the nuclear establishment internationally and U.S. Now, Dr. Barkley G. Jones was going to provide her with instruments to analyze um, uh, the, the internal radiation levels in TEPCO officials. She has a patent on the technology, but she wouldn't tell me what it was. And so I looked up Dr. Barkley G. Jones. Well, he's Canadian, but he is the chair. He's 72 years old, and he is the present chair of the Department of Nuclear Plasma and Radiological Engineering at the University of Illinois. He has academic positions on... Um, committees within the university and um, within uh, consulting. His, some of his consult, consulting activities have been with the Argonne National Lab, that's DOE, um, uh, the um, Thermo Hydraulic Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Washington, D.C., Illinois Power Company Nuclear Review Audit Group, Electrical Power Research Institute, Palo Alto, Institute of Nuclear Power Operations in Atlanta, Georgia. He received an F. Lone Fellow of Canada to Great Britain uh, award in the 50s, and uh, he was at Harwell, which is the British Nuclear uh, uh, Analytical Laboratory in England. He also got a Halliburton Education Leadership Award, and I believe that Halliburton is owned by the Rothschilds. Um, he got an Edison Electric Institute's Power Engin Engineering Ed Educators Award, American Nuclear Society Fellow, Power Engineering Educator Award, Edison Electric Institute, that's probably Rockefeller, and um, an Outstanding Professor Award from his own department. So he is very, very, very tied in to the nuclear establishment uh, Canada, Britain, and the U.S., all three, he is a key player, and that uh, department uh, at the University of Illinois Champaign is very, very, very tied to the Health Physics Society, and I'm telling you, these people are dumb. They're really dumb people. Now, some of the uh, conferences they've had, I wrote down the different interests who were represented. There was a Jew, this is the network that we're talking about that put this nightmare together and is now doing the cover-up. Uh, June 22nd, 2009, they had a big um, um, Health Physics Society um, a conference, not just health physics, but other, other aspects too. And this is posted on the University of Illinois uh, website which means it was very important and they were very involved. So, Entergy, the big nuclear power, point, uh, power plant company, was there. Uh, representatives from the Pilgrim and Indian Point reactors were there. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the University of Illinois, um, the Nuclear Engineering Institute, NASA, the American Nuclear Insurers, isn't that interesting? The, the insurance companies were there. Uh, the EPRI is the Le Electric Power Research Institute, Radiation Safety and Control Services Incorporated, American Electric Power, uh, the President's Office, President, um, the, the President Obama sent uh, the office of man from the Office of Management and Budget, a representative. Arriva was represented from France. Uh, Wataru Mizumachi represented the Japan uh, 
Nuclear Engineering Society. He was from Tokyo. PG&E sent a representative from the Diablo Canyon Power Plant. Uh, Progress Energy Environmental Lab, Chesapeake Environmental Services. So all these people, all these stakeholders, uh, there was another one at Browns Ferry in 2009. And uh, the Atomic Energy uh, of Canada was there. Um, Sumitomo Metals Industry was there. Exelon Corporation, Constellation Generation Group, uh, the Russian Research Institute for Nuclear uh, Plants, um, uh, the uh, German uh, Chemcraft Work Liebstog uh, AG was represented. Duke Energy, Oak Ridge Associate University Studies. I mean, look at Ontario Power Group. Look at this spider web of vested interests. This is who is running the nuclear power industry. And the reason Areva is so interesting is uh, because in a Japanese book, uh, an, an investigative journalist called Hiroshi Takase um, wrote a two-volume investigation of the Rothschilds. And he had a page in it that was in English, and it showed that the whole entire nuclear industry globally is run out of France for the Rothschilds. That must be Arriva. Yeah, and, and to show the Canadian connection to it, uh, as you know, uh, uh, a huge amount of the lands here in Canada are crown lands. Canada, Canada is one of the largest uranium exporting countries in the world, uh, and, and that's part of the Rothschilds. And the uh, crown of England's um, uh, principal uh, interests in Canada and against the explicit provisions of uh, Canadian law and the rules and regulations of the Canadian Nuclear Regulatory Committee, Canadian uranium is routinely exported from Canada and is the preponderant majority of the uranium in American, UK, and Israeli depleted uranium weapons. And when you and I brought this issue to a member of parliament of the new Democratic Party who brought it to the floor of the House of Commons, the now Prime Minister of Canada, who's an Illuminati agent, Stephen Harper, brought the, the director of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission of Canada and fired her on the spot right on the floor of the House of Commons over another pretext. But that's what it was about, to ensure that there was a steady supply of Canadian uranium for depleted uranium weapons for the continued use in this planetary genocide. So we've named plenty of names here, uh, from Stephen Harper to Barack Obama to David Chu, his assistant, to uh, President Obama, to uh, Vice President of, uh, of the United States, to Elizabeth of Windsor and her consort, to the Rothschild family, to the Rockefellers headed by David Rockefeller, who should be in the dock for war crimes. I'd like to name one more name. In uh, another one of these conferences that was held in 2008 in Florida, I found a link between um, uh, the Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital uh, to this nuclear industry. And one of the attendees was a medical doctor, Dr. Ludwig Feinendagen, um, who was from UC San Francisco, the University of California at San Francisco. Uh, he, had, he had been there, but he's at Memorial Sloan Kettering now. And he, um, um, he's the one who has been promoting low-level radiation cell biology research update. But uh, Dr. Feinendagen 
is the one who's promoted hormesis. And um, that's really interesting because the University of California is the major weapon of mass destruction uh, developer for the whole, all of the international financiers. And they were the, the management contractor and the developer, co-developer with the Soviet Union of HARP. Right. And it was and it was developed at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab where I'm a whistleblower. And here is the um, one of the main promoters, a medical doctor of hormesis, which is uh, a fantasy or a hypothesis or a disinformation uh, meme that has been promoted broadly that low levels of radiation actually benefit your health. It's the opposite. Low levels of radiation, especially chronic exposure, which we're facing now for centuries, is uh, an extremely dangerous um, thing to public health and the environment because low-level radiation per unit has a higher biological effect, a more dangerous biological effect than higher levels and uh, there are complicated reasons to explain it. But basically, at high levels, there's so many free radicals from the radioactive particles in tissue that they run into each other and cancel each other, and it's the free radicals that cause a lot of the damage. So at low levels, they're uh, very far apart, and they, um, they do more damage because they have to um, pair up with electrons by stealing them from molecules that make life possible in the cell. So, so there we have yeah. all of the ties right to UC San Francisco. And Alfred, I was attacked physically outside of my apartment on September 20th, 2010, uh, in Berkeley, California, by a man I had never met or seen. He um, is the keeper of the RNA database ribonucleic acid database at UC San Francisco. And he's the one who physically attacked me in front of my apartment. I've never met him. I didn't even know who he was. And um, it's because of uh, the things that I've been exposing. Right, right. And, and so we can now see uh, through this forensic evidence and, and by tying it into all the hierarchy of government and offices and responsibilities that we have done, we can see how what we could call a catastrophic timeline has been created of a radiated Earth that will be going forward. And that's a catastrophic timeline. Now, uh, just to let people know, that there is science out there that says there are parallel timelines and there's a positive timeline and we can opt into that one. That's my humble opinion. We we have about three minutes left in this segment. Okay. And I'm I I'm just wondering. Uh, there. I'd like to I'd like yeah, to sure. tie it all together. Oh, good, good, great. Um, what I want to say, and I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I want no, to. No, fine slip this in, is that uh, Prince Philip, who is the consort of Queen Elizabeth, the British monarch, and Prince Bernard, who was the consort of Queen Juliana, the Dutch uh, monarch, uh, both were Nazis. They're both German. They were German princes who married uh, two uh, crown princesses. And Prince Philip went to a Nazi school in Germany when he was 16. That uh, the leader of that school left Germany and he went to Scotland and started Gordonston, which is where uh, most of the ruling elite send their sons, including the the crown prince and princes of the British monarchy. Um, Queen Elizabeth has practically ninety five percent of the ownership of uranium supplies and mines around the world because she owns uh, the mineral rights to all of the British Commonwealth. It's her personal wealth. 
Now, uh, Prince Philip started the World Wildlife Fund and brought Prince Bernhard into it. That is a master 